What is going on, everyone? It's Jaron from Jaronism, back with a live video for you tonight. Thank you so much for joining me, and a big special thank you to those who helped make this video possible. Uh, let me bring up the screen for you so that you can see if I can get it up. Hope everybody is well. I do appreciate you tuning in, but I did want to show you first and foremost that this video came from the fact that we did a FOIA request and here is the GoFundMe. So a thank you to everyone who donated. Um, you can see, yep, somebody donated five days ago. That's nice. But uh, before that, it was three three months ago. You can see here, $40, $5. Thank you, Joe Deshawn, who uh, did a good majority of it. And also, I know Patricia Steer. Thank you very much for a great donation. Thank you, Southern Israelite and the anonymous people. So anyone that did uh, donate towards that, we also had somebody who donated a huge um, chunk of it on a Globuster show when he found out that uh, the cost of duplicating uh, these files from only 2006. So anyway, um, on the screen you will see the GoFundMe, and that's the payment that NASA required uh, for the duplication of this spacewalk footage. Let's actually do a short review on exactly what I'm talking about, real short. And if you go down into the description of this video, you will see a few things. Let me get those ready for you. You'll see a few different um, links. One of those is, or two of those, are a link to the two previous videos I've done on this. And hey, thank you very much. Super chat. Appreciate that. Let me turn that off so you don't have to hear that every time. There we go. And let's see here. All right. So if you go back to here, we will see that I did a video uh, probably... Uh, it's got to be back six months ago, five months ago now, and it was the first video I did, and it was called um, NASA Responds to My FOIA Request. There is a link for that video in the description. The second video that I did was called um, FOIA Nonsense, also a link in the description for you to check out that video. And you're about to watch this video, which is the spacewalk footage delivery uh, that I've been waiting for. And I'll kind of show you how that works. And then also in the description, you should be able to find two links to two different archive.org uh, uploads. They were extremely large. I don't remember offhand. I think it's 46 total gigabytes that I had to upload. And the reason that there's two different ones, and those links, as I said, um, are in the description. One of them is tinyurl.com slash NASA FOIA 14. The other one is slash NASA FOIA 22. So just as a quick um, reminder of what happened, that'll kind of explain why there's two files and everything. Uh, you might remember my FOIA request started in early April, included uh, quite a few mishaps and complications. And at first, uh, my initial $986 payment went missing for a month. <clears throat> Excuse me. My card issuer said that it was pending and that it was awaiting NASA's collection, and NASA claimed that there was no payment. So I had to wait a full 30 days until the funds uh, automatically were released back into my account, at which point I was able to try and make the payment again. That time they finally received it. So another month passed, and I finally got the hard drive back. I had to send them a brand new one terabyte hard drive. I got that returned to me, and when I plugged that in and looked at what they sent me, they had sent me the wrong spacewalk completely. Uh, they sent me one from 2009. And that is the one that's located at tinyurl.com slash, and let me go bring these up for you, because right now I'm going to close it. We are not going to be discussing in any way, shape, or form the file that I did not ask for. So let me show you that one first, and here we go. So this is the <clears throat> tinyurl.com slash NASA FOIA 22. And so you should see that on the screen now, if I'm not mistaken. And those files are exactly as were sent to me. So nothing has been changed. Nothing has been edited. They are completely and totally uh, legit. Thank you very much for that super chat. appreciate that. And so you can see here, it starts out with a hour and 21 minutes, 15 minutes, hour and 10 minutes, 23, whatever. So what happened when I received this particular spacewalk is I had to send the hard drive back. Um, at first, they tried to do that at my expense. Finally, they agreed to pay for it, which makes all the sense since it's their fault. And then uh, another few weeks went by, almost a month, and I finally got the correct spacewalk today, or sorry, not today, a few days back, three days ago. But um, they also included that original spacewalk. So that's why I've uploaded them both to the public domain. Again, tinyurl.com slash 
uh, NASA FOIA 14 or NASA FOIA 22. So I'm going to shut down uh, this page here, the 22 page, since uh, we're not going to be looking at that at all. We're going to be looking at the uh, NASA FOIA 14, which is the spacewalk that I requested. Now, I would like to say that this is exactly as NASA sent it to me, but you'll notice that the three files here at the top that say 1, 2, and 3, uh, they're all a minute and 26 seconds, uh, and they all should say collectspace.com, yeah, down here in the lower right. Those are actually my video. It accidentally got put in that folder, and then when I uploaded it to archive.org uh, with all these other ISS 014M033, blah, 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 and I'll tell you what those mean shortly. Um, it got uploaded with it, so it's clearly uh, separated from the files that I got from NASA and the fact that their files are named ISS 014 blah, blah, blah. My files are named Space Station Golf Shot, and then it's just two copies of the same video accidentally got uploaded. So the story is that um, originally, uh, when I requested this spacewalk, let me bring it back up here, uh, the reason I did is because this is the only uh, piece of the spacewalk that I could find online. And I searched high and low, uh, different different sites, typing in different, you know, the expedition number. They always have weird numbers. It's like an expedition number. Then it's an EVA number. Uh, whether you're dealing with Roscosmos or NASA makes a difference. It just becomes a mess. It's hard to kind of keep track of. But no matter what I could do, I could never find this footage, which seems to be some golfer. He's supposedly taking a shot from what they call a porch outside of this Fed uh, module. Um and I could just not find anything. It was terribly done. And if you, let me see if I can see, you'll have to bring it up yourself so you can see the actual true file and not try and look at it secondhand through the YouTube restream. But you'll see that there's just a lot of errors back here, like lines, uh, different coloring. Uh, let me bring it back up so you can kind of see. And I was just concerned. I said, well, what's going on here? And then as I started to look into it, I couldn't find any real, uh, any video footage at all that this spacewalk ever even took place. When I found out what exactly happened, which was, and we should be able to bring this up here, is a golf company, um, and I can't remember the name of it offhand. Let me look it up here. We're going to go Expedition um, 14. Let's see here if we can find this. Um, yeah, it might be this one. So talking about Expedition 15, uh, or 14, sorry, which was Commander Lopez Alegria, Flight Engineer Mikel Chirin. These are the two supposed spacewalkers from this spacewalk. Uh, talks about when they were launched up, and then they were part of this EVA-1. So real quick, just to read you what supposedly took place, this expedition's first spacewalk took place November 22nd, 2006. So that is the spacewalk that we're going to be looking at. Starting at 23 universal time, having been delayed um, due to a cooling issue, blah, 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 blah. During the spacewalk, Tiran hit a golf ball from the exterior of the pier's airlock. This experiment was sponsored by a Toronto-based commercial company, Element 21, which manufactures golf clubs made of scandium. The ball weighs just 3 grams compared with 48 grams from a standard golf ball. At that height, it was unlikely to damage any station components, which might accidentally have been hit. Total nonsense. Uh, there were three balls, allowing two options for repeating the shot if required, but only one shot was actually taken, taken with a one-handed grip by Tiran, uh, while uh, Lopez Alegria was holding his legs. The, so the shot was a substantial slice with the ball flying off to the right of the station instead of the rear. In 2006, there were plans for a video from, uh, sorry, for plans of video of the shot to be used in a TV commercial, which I don't believe was ever done. Uh, as you saw, the footage was terrible. The progress of the ball, which... Now, this is a classic sentence. Read the sentence with me and tell me this isn't the funniest thing you ever heard. Uh, the progress of the ball, which contains tracking equipment. Okay, so this ball, which weighs three grams. Okay, I don't know if you know how much three grams weighs. Go back to your drug days or something. Three grams is nothing. And it has, supposedly, some tracking equipment. All right, the progress of the ball, which contains tracking equipment, could be followed on E21's Track the Ball in Space website, which was set up in 2006. Although the site simply calculates an assumed distance for the ball based on a constant speed and does not perform any real tracking of the ball, but it's three grams and contained tracking equipment, and you could go ahead and follow that if you wanted. However, it was just assumed and estimated distances based on a constant speed and did not perform any real tracking of the ball at all. So that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Uh, stunt was carried out 35 years after Alan Shepard hit two golf balls on the moon during Apollo 14. Um, First, let me voice this just so you understand. I don't mind if you think you live on a spinning ball. I do not. Okay? Not, not that I don't mind. I don't mind. But I also do not think that's where I live. Simply because it is not matching 
my reality at all. And for me to find truth, pretty simple process. You have to take all the evidence that you can, all the data that you can, process it, and look at it with your reality. If it matches your reality, most likely it's true. If it doesn't match your reality, most likely it's false. So when I hear things like people have been to the moon, it doesn't match my reality in any way, shape, or form. Um, I can zoom in on what the moon is uh, with my camera. I can you know, see these spots on it. I can see uh, this very bright object in the sky. Do I think that men have been there? No. Review the evidence and you know, review the, uh, the transcripts from Apollo 11 and check how many times while on the moon Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin said the words Earth. I'm pretty sure that if you just flew 238,000 miles, landed on a foreign body, um, and looked at your buddy, you would turn around and look back and say, dude, look at the earth. Look at the earth. No, nothing like that ever said. The word earth isn't said. So when you start to hear things like that, and then you realize, oh, well, that makes sense if you're on earth, right? Why would you remember to say, hey, look at the earth. You're on earth in a soundstage somewhere in an Arizona desert. So you wouldn't remember to say those things. Other issues with the moon landing uh, are numerous, but uh, one of them um, also simply being when you look at um, the takeoff uh, footage that they show us or any of the footage that they show us, or then you go into looking at how it's possible that you could send that kind of footage, what kind of battery would be needed to send live video footage back. Then if you look into the newspapers of the time and you realize that all the children were given the day off of school, number one, all the children in the country take tomorrow off, the guys are landing on the moon, you should watch it with your family. So they wanted everybody at home. They wanted everybody in front of the TV. And then the TV guide, the newspapers, provided a schedule at what time it would land, at what time they would get out, at what time they would do their moonwalk, at what time they would be sleeping. And then you have to realize, wait a second, this is the first time that men have traveled that far. This is the first time that we've landed a craft on a foreign body. This is the first time that they've ever done that. Would you want the world watching, including all the children? What if something went wrong? What if you landed and they all died? Well, then you realize this is just a made-for-TV movie. That's all it is. It's just a movie that they had put together, and they wanted everybody watching it, and they made sure that they passed out everybody in the country a job. Here, you build this little part, and you build this little part, and you build this little part, and make sure you go home and tell your families that you had something to do with the moon landing. So then the people build a little part, send it off to NASA. They go home and say, oh, I helped build the Saturn V. So when they watch the TV and the rocket goes up in the sky and the next thing you know, you're talking to some guys that look like they're in a craft on the way to the moon, it all settles in and the guys get all excited because they helped get men to the moon. It's a big pride thing. And then you go and tell your friends, yeah, did you see the moon landing? Yeah, I did see it. Yeah, that was my little trinket that went up there too. And before you know it, everybody in the country knows someone who knows someone who had something to do with the moon landings. And just like that, you've socially conditioned the entire country to believe that you went to the moon, even though... Since 1972, no person has ever been further than a few hundred miles. That is fact. That is admitted. And yet you're supposed to believe that 50 years ago, (laughs) we flew 238,000 miles away. If you believe that, that's fine. It's okay with me. You can believe that. Then you need to understand why I don't, and I have every right to my beliefs, period. And I don't believe that we went to the moon, and that's because it doesn't match my reality at all. I know how technology works. I know that if we went to the moon in 1969 and 1971 and 72, that we would have a hotel on the moon, that we would have bases on the moon, that we would have uh, people going around the moon all the time, that it wouldn't take 50 years and everything to regress and nothing to happen since then. And in fact, we've barely gone a half of a percent as far as we went 50 years ago. It's not the way life works. It's called a lie. It's called a story. And you can either buy into it or you cannot. But Don't get mad at me for my beliefs or my opinions when they're based off of things that match my reality. So the earth is observably flat. That's the way it goes. Sorry. Sorry that I can see too far. Sorry that I can see mountains 170 miles away. Sorry that I can see boats and when I zoom in on them with my camera that they can appear to my eye to be falling over the edge, but then when I zoom in, they come right back. Things that men wouldn't have had 500 years ago that we have today to help us prove that what we've been told and what we've been sold is truly a lie. And you've been sold it. Whether you realize it or not, you've been sold it since the day you were born. That's why every Happy Meal and every toy is space-related. And you've got Space Jam. you got to put Michael Jordan in the space movie. And you've got to... It goes on and on, the conditioning. you got to have the the Earth pass by with every movie beginning. And in every logo, you got to have the Earth. And it's something that can't be copyrighted. The Earth, the globe, is not a copyrightable thing. 
So everybody grabs a hold of it and uses it in their logo and uses it in their images because it's not copyrightable and it's just some image of the earth that people want you to believe in. Now, again, you can believe that. Believe it all you want and I'll show you reasons why I don't. And then it's up to you to decide. And if you still want to believe in it, by all means, enjoy yourself. Just understand. Well, answer me this. Let's put it this way. Would you say that the government lies? Ask yourself that. Do men lie? Do men try and get one up on you? Do men try and uh, you know, get into positions of power to make money and to do so at any cost? Recently, I was watching Forensic Files. Not sure if you know that uh, show. Pretty good. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate that, uh, Rebel, so much. So on Forensic Files, at one point, this uh, forensic scientist is being interviewed, and he's talking, and he said, and I quote, well, I was really impressed with the work that they did because in this line of business, you can get anyone to say anything for the right price. And I was like, what the? Did he just say that? Like, that is not okay to just say that as a forensic scientist, anyone in that line of business uh, or, you know, in that line of business, that people will say anything in a court of law for the right amount of money. So these kind of things need to start to kind of make sense to us that, okay, wait a second. So if the worst people in the world have the most money and they're able to pay people to do their dirty work, we have to recognize that there's a plenty of people in this world that will take that money and do whatever it takes. They'll lie to your face. Joe Rogan said it, right? Joe Rogan said it on his little thing when he said, hey, government, if there's something you need me to hide, just give me the money, show me the money, show me the, the truth, and I'll lie to my mother. And that's what it really comes down to. That's what we have to accept, that there's people like that in this world. I mean, sometimes you just need to look at a sampling of 100 people. Or I've often told the story that, you know, if you left a $100 bill on your coffee table and had a party with all your closest friends, you know, there's a chance that $100 bill might remain on that table for the you know, duration of the party. Now take it and say that as those people walked in, they were told secretly somehow, I don't know, in some fake world, that if that money was taken, nobody would ever know it was them. Well, all of a sudden, every one of your friends would take that money. Okay, And if you say, well, not all my friends, okay, well, half. Okay, well, a quarter. Okay, well, one out of 10. Okay, well, one out of 20. Whatever number you get to, multiply that out by the 325 million people that are in this country, and you'll come up with a huge number of people that will screw you to your face, whether they're your friends or you're not. So then you start to realize that there is the kind of people, there is the kind of numbers uh, that could create this kind of lie, that could create this kind of bullshit, right? So really what it comes down to, and I lost my train of thought here. Um, what was I getting into? Well, basically I was talking about the fact that we've got too many people that can't see through the indoctrination. They can't see through the lie. They can't even grasp the idea that they could be fooled on such a large scale when it's really not that difficult. It's really not that difficult to fool humans. It's been shown many times. And as I've said before, it's very easy to believe a lie, right? It takes one second for me to lie to you and for you to believe it. But if you want to know the truth, it takes much more time, it takes much more work. And a lot of people just have no desire for that. And they did a great job selling it to us when we were young, uh, getting us to believe in it before we were old enough to even think. Think about this. Um, before 2015, which is when Flat Earth had a resurgence, you had basically a 0% chance of coming out of fourth grade and not believing in the ball earth, which is just crazy to think about. Think about that. You talk about indoctrination. Uh, when you've got a country who, by the age of fourth grade, all believe in one thing solidly, because they've been told it since they were born. That's the only reason. We weren't shown evidence of it. We weren't shown examples. We weren't shown tests and experiments. No. It was just mentioned in passing, and we live on this ball, and it spins through outer space, and outer space is infinite, and these other planets exist, and we've sent probes there, and we know their sizes, and we know the size of the sun, and we know how far the sun is. It's 93 million miles, and we know it's 867,000 miles across, and we just all believed it. We just all bought it. And again, if you want to feel okay with that, that's fine. But just understand, oh, I know what I was talking about. Does the government lie, right? So I was getting into, uh, do men lie? Well, the answer is yes. Obviously, <laughs> over and over again, they do. So why would you draw the line at the one place we can't go? Why in the world would you ever believe that? 
Why would you believe what the authority's telling you when they're talking about a place that you can't double check? You can't go to Saturn. You can't guarantee that those rings are made of rocks and that they that it has 67 moons in orbit of it. You can't guarantee, you can't even, you can't back up any of that. The size of any of the planets in the sky, you can't prove that. If you think that you can look in some sort of telescope and prove the size of Jupiter, you need to do a whole bunch more research. You don't understand how the sky works. You don't understand angular sizes. You don't understand scaling and variance. That's just the facts. Because if you think that you can look in a telescope and say, yep, the sun is uh, exactly 867,000 miles wide, you're wrong. It's all mathematics. It's not reality. And as Tesla said, these mathematicians wander off in, in various places in these crazy formulas, and they completely lose touch with reality. And that's what's happened. And we bought it, and they sold it to us because they said math is true. Math is fact. Math is everything. They taught us that. So then it got to the place that you look in the sky, you figure, well, they must be the distances that they tell us, even though the distances are ridiculous. And the fact that once you get the, uh, the benefit of saying, oh, those stars, they're an infinite distance away. They don't change sizes. They don't change in their parallax. They're just an infinite distance away. Deal with it. Uh, they're all suns, by the way, because we can test their light. And you can believe all that stuff. It's, you know, I just want to make sure that that's clear. I am certainly not telling anybody that they can't believe whatever the hell they want. Believe what you want. One of the problems, though, is that it's being taught. It is a religion without any stretch of the imagination. If you think it's anything other, holy smokes, do you not understand religion? Religion is a system of beliefs. It is a belief system. Just because a bunch of people believe it doesn't make it anything other than a religion. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if the whole world believes in your religion. It's still a religion. It's a system of beliefs based on axiom, based on foundations. That's what religion is. It's an adherence to doctrines, an adherence to dogma, and that's what science is. And that's what science has become. If you want to be a fan of that, if you want to follow in line like a lemming, that's fine with me. I don't mind. But you should also have the same opinion of me and just say, hey, if Jaron wants to believe that the earth is a, a flat plane, so be it. But when you come at me and say, well, explain how your flat plane works, explain how your sun works and your moon and your stars and where does all the continents lie and how does the south work and how the hell would I know? How would I know and how is that my responsibility to pull together the entirety of flat earth research in, in, in a couple years? It's just impossible. So what we got to do is just keep getting the word out and it's getting out. You know, have no fear. I've seen a lot of people who are getting frustrated or they feel like it's taking too long or uh, it's going to be a long process. I hope you remember that for the globe earth to win over took some 300, 400 years. Okay, so... To get the flat earth back, it's not going to take that long, of course, but it's going to take a little while. It's going to take some people. It's going to take getting some people in different segments, some uh, PhDs, some people in the scientific sector to start to look into this, which they're already doing. We have proof of that all over the place. Um, and you can start to see that this is going to take hold because the simple fact that they can't prove what they've taught us. That's it. It's that simple. And it sucks for them because when you've... Uh, basically told the world a lie, well, then it becomes hard to hide that lie when it starts coming out and these news agencies want to come out with these flat earth uh, little spots or these little segments. It's hard because the elite can't tell them not to. They can't say, hey, don't do that flat earth story because the next question would be, why not? What do you mean? Why can't I do a flat earth story? It's ridiculous. These people believe the earth's flat. So the problem is that a lot of that stuff is getting let out. It's going to papers. People are covering these conferences. And the more that we get this out, the more that people hear it, the more that people think, the more that people say, hey, let me go back because you're right. If we're all taught something before fourth grade, we all accept it as being true, then it must be damn true. It must be evidential in so many ways. And that's not what the uh, truth is. That it's, the evidence is nowhere. It's simply a group of stories by men with a certain worldview, and they hate the idea of creation, and they hate the idea of a created world, and they hate the idea of anything other than than the materialistic system that their laws describe. If anything's outside of that, well, it doesn't exist to them. And if you want to be their little lackeys and go around repeating everything that they say and repeating the books that they wrote for you, I, I can't help you. All these books were written at the exact same time. Okay, All these books were written in the 1600s, 1700s, at the advent of the printing press. All of a sudden, they could mass produce books, and you're telling me you're not afraid that they looked at each other and said, we could lie to the world with this. We could lie to the world. Whatever people read, people were just dying for information. They were just dying for anything. And because they, most of them were illiterate. 
They had never read anything in their entire life but the Bible. And so all of a sudden, here comes all these books of Newton's Principia, and all, and believe me, people ate it up. People ate it up. Now, again, if these things are proven to be true, so be it. I'll admit my folly and say, no, you know, I did think the earth was flat, but now it has been clearly proven to me that it's not. So far, oh boy, you guys got a ways to go. Sorry, having a drink. All right, let's move on to this Expedition 14. I got my little pieces out. And I'll show you some of the issues that I have. Let me turn on my little pad here. And we will look at this together, and I'll show you the problems I have with it. Now, remember, the problem was that I had seen that one little spacewalk footage just here. Let me see if I can get you framed up better. Uh, let's see. I think maybe this would be better. Yeah, a little bit. All right. So, again, we'll watch this just so you can see. This is all I could find, and so I did the FOIA request uh, and finally got the footage. Um, so this should be proof of a five-and-a-half-hour spacewalk. Now, a uh, few reasons why this request is not over yet. Uh, number one, if you go back to my two previous videos, uh, you'll see uh, an email exchange I had with a Jessica who was part of the FOIA department until she recently uh, emailed back and said she was no longer with NASA FOIA and I had to contact somebody else. But during the time that we were communicating, at one point she asked me if I wanted the audio from the spacewalk. And I said, well, yeah, if the audio is part of the spacewalk, I would like it, please. Thank you. And I got no audio. So the audio that you hear will be from this particular file only. It was an excellent shot. Oh, sorry. This is on. Uh, I should have told you that if you're watching it. Uh, that was on three times speed. Let me get it back to one. All right. So you'll hear the, you know, the audio the in this particular dot file. That's moving away from us. Right. And so you'll hear audio in those first three, but everything else, the only audio you hear, and let me just turn one on and see if we can hear it, is like a, yeah, you might be able to hear that. It's like a running machine or something. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Maybe you can hear it if you go to the files themselves. And let's see. So you can kind of hear that, maybe. Uh, you can hear it if you go to the files. You might not be able to hear it on YouTube. But anyway, go to these files uh, again. Uh, tinyurl.com slash NASA FOIA 14 to get to these files. So <clears throat> what I also realized after uh, going through these files carefully to try and figure out what the hell this coding was, I realized that if we go to this one here, ISS 014, which is talking about the expedition, I have no idea what M is um, or, uh, yeah, or where it says 14M here. But it does say right below that, 13, 26, 23, 50. Well, I realize the 01 is a camera number. So if you notice uh, files 4 through, uh, let's see here, 4 through 20 are camera 1. So if we switch these cameras, you'll see that all that's happening is the footage is changing, but the camera remains the same. Okay? So I was able to realize that. Then if you go to 02, uh, this will be camera 2. Okay, and you can flip around through 02 and see this footage. Then you can go to 03, and you can click around and see uh, 03, as you can see. And then we can go to 04, and we can click around through 04. Now, right off the bat, you've seen a couple of the files that I've clicked on randomly. Uh, is this proof of, proof of a spacewalk to you uh, that was done by the two gentlemen that were on the uh, porch hitting the golf ball? Uh, to me, it is not in any way. It could be faked so easily. And this, it's not all without astronauts. Um, the first camera, let me bring up my little chart here. I have a little chart that I've been filling out. Okay, so the first camera contains no astronaut footage at all. Okay, so this uh, camera one, uh, there's never footage, at least that I saw. And again, to watch this in its entirety would take over 14 hours. So um, I cannot say I've watched it all, but I've uh, kind of played through it fast. And I'm going to turn this to three times speed right now just to kind of help us get through some of this. Um, but you'll see that throughout the entirety of the camera one, uh, there's never an astronaut present that I was able to see. Uh, so we'll go down here. Okay. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Now I want to show you some interesting parts of this first camera uh, that I thought were interesting. Let me bring up, um, let's see here, which file is the first one? 224. Oh, so then the number at the end, uh, I was talking about this. So we got uh, camera zero one. I can't really tell you what the 327 is. I believe that they're dates because this spacewalk was the 22nd and 23rd. It looks like these dates are 1326 and then 1327. The reason I say that is the time after the number after that is the time. 
So you'll see here in this file it's 2350 followed by 0023, so the day switch, so the 26 switches to the 27th. Now those days aren't correct because the spacewalk was on the 22nd and 23rd of November. Um, but I'm just pointing out that that's clearly where the day changed. You can see it goes from 2350 to 0023, 0047, on down to about 5, here's 557, and then it switches to the second camera and starts over at 26 again and starts at 2351. Then we'll see it switch to the 27, 0024, so on and so forth down the list. So I was able to get that much out of it, not really sure what the rest, like I said, I don't know what the 326 is. Um, and yeah, I just I can't tell you what that is right off the bat. If anybody knows, leave a comment um, or let me know. Also, I will need help going through all this. Obviously, I haven't spent 13 hours looking at all of it, um, so feel free to go here and do whatever you want with any of this footage um, and tell me if you think it's proof of the guys on the, the spacewalk. So let me show you a few different places. We're going to go to file number 224 of this first one, 224. And we are going to skip forward until, sorry, I can't read my own writing. What is this number? 224-1335 is where it starts. Okay, so I want you to watch something here. At 1335, let me get a little forward here. Okay, so if I'm under the correct understanding of how this all works, we've got the ISS, we've got a camera at it, it's looking at the Earth. Now, we've all seen what happens when we start to get uh, distortion or we get some tracking issues here. Um, you're about to see this part of the screen, the Earth part, start to kind of wig out. The problem is the ISS will not. Let's watch. So see that? You'll notice now that there's a heavy, heavy choppiness coming out of this Earth. See that? But we're not getting the same thing from the ISS. Okay, so we'll back up that a little bit. Or where are we at? 13, yeah. So I kept finding that there's a good picture right there. Oops. Wish I would have stayed there. Are we on the next one? Oh, 224. All right. So here we go. We'll watch it again, and I'll kind of pause it as it happens. Um, and you'll get, see, you'll get, you're getting all kinds of wavy distortion here. See that? Watch a little more. Okay. I did see a flicker up here, but what it looks like is that the Earth is glitching and that the ISS is not. You'll see heavy glitching here, but you're not seeing that here. You may see a little here or here or here, but we're not seeing at all. Let me go now. This is the next file. No, wait. Let me go back to, so at 244, this one here, uh, this is just a 3 minute and 14 second little clip, but at 221, I saw the same thing. Let me go there, 212. Again, watch the Earth and watch the ISS. And you see it glitching out, and the ISS is not. Glitching, ISS. So explain that to me. Globers, explain to me how this is anything other than you've got a static, oops, what did I click on? 224. All right. You've got this static picture here, and you've got an Earth, which is nothing more than a screen on some sort of conveyor belt, on some sort of, uh, uh, you know, picture in IMAX theater or something that's behind where they're doing this stuff, and they got a little feed problem. I, I can't explain it any other way. Uh, why else would this all glitch out as we're about to see it? Oops, what file am I at now? 224. All right, let's go to 255. Oh, I wanted to show this here. 255. This one here. Okay. And we're going to go to 10 o'clock or 10 minute mark. <clears throat> yeah, I just thought this was weird here. Um, so you've got what looks like the earth uh, getting dark as we move forward a little bit more here. Um just looks completely ridiculous to me. Um, but then you get, the, you know, a lot of this where it's just getting stuck. That I mean, Are we still at three times speed? Yeah, we're still at three times speed, and you, you just get this stuck kind of footage. You have to jump way forward to kind of get it to move. Um, trying to remember what else about this piece that I wanted to show. Obviously not proof of a spacewalk, as I said before, but again... If you want to believe that you live here and that this is a ball Earth and it's a sphere and it's an outer space and it's 25 trillion miles away from the closest star, you can believe that. I don't mind. Believe it all you want. Uh, let's go to the next one at 1308 on 401. Let's see, 401. 
I just had a, whole, a lot of the earth glitches mostly. This one's at 1308. Here. And you'll see this start to glitch out. And gets all caught up, but we don't see a lot of that over here, at least not equal. Uh, I can see somebody saying, oh, I did see a little bit of it glitching out. Uh, you see heavy glitch all along the earth, and then you get a, maybe a piece here and a piece here. Um, sound or no video. Oh, this is on, uh, let's go to 421. Yeah, so we're at 421 at 251. Does that make any sense? 421 at 251. 421. I don't know which one that is. That doesn't go to 251, Jaren. Um, not sure what that one was. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, at 541, another glitch. There's so many glitches on here. I'm just trying to find the ones that I marked that are the best ones. This is at 12. Because then I started thinking it was happening at the end of the file. That's what it looked like. But this one here is at 1239. Uh, let's get up here a little bit more. And 30, oops. Oh, this is the one that froze. Now, here's the other thing. So this is frozen now. The earth stops moving. But if you can hear this, you'll have to go find the file yourself. You can still hear the sound. You can still hear the same exact sound. So if the video froze, wouldn't I have a frozen sound or, or you know, pause sound? You don't get that. You just get sound playing. Um, again, the more important thing here is, is this proof that a spacewalk took what place between those two guys um, and... You know, if you don't know, it took NASA about eight months to get me this spacewalk footage from 2006. Okay, I'm not asking for something from 1971 or something. Uh, this is 2006, a normal spacewalk. It cost us $1,400 to get this footage, and this is what we got. Uh, stuff that you can find from the ISS. I mean, if we went and looked at the ISS Live on Ustream right now, uh, you're getting exactly the same thing. Let's see here. And ISS International, where's Light Ustream? Just to show you real quick that this is exactly what uh, they're producing all the time. Um, so should this have cost me $1,400 to get? Uh, this is all that they're showing. Look at this. Whoa, what's going on here? Oh. So I don't know if you can see that good, but uh, uh, the Earth is... Wow. <laughs> that looked really bad. I'll have to watch this later. That's interesting. What is this from? Yeah, so again, you can think you live here. Um, I've never been watching the ISS live and seen the Earth glitch, but not this. That was what I found so interesting about that those videos so far. Um, but totally a joke if you're talking about the footage. Now, if you ask me what happened here, I'm just going to go on a limb and tell you that they created the files after the fact because I don't think the spacewalk ever took place. That's my opinion. Um, where did we go here? I got away from it. All right. Back. Uh, 14. Yeah. So um, let me see what else we got on here. Uh, so we got the pause with sound. Uh, so then the first time we see an astronaut is for 10 seconds on camera two. So we're going to go camera two now. Uh, 0 47. Okay. So again, now camera switched, but we still don't get astronaut footage. So thank you, NASA, for sending me 29 minutes of this where we just see this thing moving around, the camera moving around. Again, if you want to think this is proof that those uh, people were out in space, uh, good for you. Um, I've got an island uh, to sell you in uh, Bakersfield. So get in contact with me. Now, let's get uh, to that file I said, 47, this one, 0247. And the astronaut appears at 640. So here we go. And here's your astronaut footage. There's some feet. And back in. Okay, that's your footage. So that's your astronaut. <laughs> yep, proof. Proof that those guys did that spacewalk because those little boots just appeared. Um, the other weird thing is no matter how you look at it, if this window, I mean, what is going on with this window reflection where you can see like the astronaut? Okay, now I go, what? There's, no, there's not even a window on the other side. You should not be able to. And how would you see a reflection of something behind? Um, but again, Go to Elon Musk's uh, beautiful Starman when you've got that red car in space. It's clearly like a cardboard cutout. It's the same thing. It's probably a cardboard cutout. It's probably not even an actual thing. Why are we seeing people on the other side of it? Makes no sense. So let's uh, continue. As I said, that was the only portion that you see. You can move forward and you don't see any more astronaut. So uh, I kept looking for more astronaut. 
Um, as you go down here, you can skip to different files. 17 minutes, 31 seconds, no astronaut. 2 minutes and 40 seconds, no astronaut. 13 minutes, 46. Next time I saw an astronaut was at uh, 3.33, which is here. And at 2.19, first astronaut shot, see-through window. Oh, you can see there. You saw him just go something go by there. Let's go back. See this? Whatever that is. So my point is, and hopefully you can see this, that if anybody knows how to do video editing, you can just chroma key this shot. Choose black as your exit color. Black gets exited, and then you put in whatever footage you want behind it, and it will look like it's happening back behind here. I mean, it's not even difficult. That's the weird thing is the fooling the world as they've done is not even difficult because people just believe it. They see this, and their mind says that must be in space. That must be, it must be NASA, they must be doing work, they must be discovering things that are helping my family, that are helping. No, they're stealing $52 million a day from the public and providing shit-ass evidence, even after taking my 1400 bucks, Not mine, sorry, I take that back. It was not my $1,400, it was other people's $1,400, and that's why this case can't be over. My question still remains to NASA, uh, like I said about the audio, and the second thing was, the another question, you can go back and watch my previous videos on the same subject. At one point, I'm talking with the NASA girl, and she says, oh, one of the problems is that there's actually only, that was interesting there, um, that there's actually only one of the astronauts of the two astronauts had helmet cam. Is that okay with you? Like as if I'm going to say, no, I need both. I said, oh, if there's only one, then yeah, send me that one. Well, if you look at these four cameras, none of it is web is uh, head cam footage. Uh, hopefully I said that, not webcam footage. Head cam. They have a little camera on their helmet. Um, usually you can see them working, doing nothing, moving Caribbean clips and, and basically wasting time. Um, I thought I was going to get uh, head cam footage from only one of the astronauts, and I got none. So uh, the case is not closed for me. I do not think that we got our money's worth at all. I mean, look at this. What is this crap that could not be faked? Why are we still seeing things um, through this little hole here? Now, somebody might say, oh, well, that's them. Well, they don't go back into the chamber. They don't go back into the decompression chamber at 333. They should be in the decompression chamber at one minute. When they come out at 23, whatever it started at, 2350, yeah. And then at the very end when they go back in. But according to this, they're in, well, something's going on inside here, as you can see. But it just so happens to coincide with when an astronaut goes behind it. Uh, it's just funny. Really, really funny. So let's continue. Let me see what else I, notes I've got here. So then, um, basically, I counted the amount of minutes that I could see an astronaut on camera two. Remember camera one, zero minutes of astronaut footage. Camera two, total of 19 minutes of the three-hour and 12-minute uh, footage that I got. So if you were to go to camera two, which starts at 02, where are we at? Camera two. So camera two starts at 2351. If you were to take um, all the time, add it up, 29 plus 7 plus 12 plus all the way to the end of camera two, you get a total of three hours and 12 minutes. If you add up the amount of time, you can see an astronaut uh, basically at all. Unless, you know, maybe there's a foot that popped up that I didn't see. I was watching it and fast forward. Uh, I counted 19 minutes of astronaut footage. Um, then when you get to camera number three, um, I want to watch, I want you to see something here. So camera three starts, camera 347. So let's see, camera 347. Where is it at? Camera three, zero, zero, four, seven. Okay. <clears throat> so this file here, uh, started off pretty normal. I was watching. I don't know what this color is. I don't know how you're supposed to believe that this is actually in space or why we would ever have. And that's the camera flip. The camera flipped to a different color. This thing starts popping over. And the next thing you know, watch this. Let's see here as it comes in. Are we watching normal speed or three times? We're watching three times fast. But here you go. Then they go in, and this is the cropped shot of this. And this should be so, again, it doesn't prove in any way that I was wrong about my claim that I thought that this spacewalk never took place, that this was a golf stunt done for some golf company that paid NASA or paid uh, Russia, Roscosmos, to do some sort of stunt where they were going to use some golf club, hit the ball. Well, I think that the astronauts went out wherever they go out, whether that's in a soundstage. I don't believe, by the way, that there's men in space that go outside of the craft to fix things that take seven hours. I don't believe in any of that. It's nonsense. 
going 17,000 miles per hour. It's just uh, space dreams. It's fantasy. It's a religion. And it's meant to indoctrinate you and your children and your parents about where they live by the fact that these men, brave men and women, are up there uh, braving the vacuum of space and hitting golf balls off your money. Um, by the way, that you know, space agencies are funded by your tax dollars. And again, I ask you, what has NASA done for you? I would like to say lately, but ever. What have NASA done for you ever? And your answer will pretty much be nothing. And you might say, well, I've got a microwave. Good for you. Good for you and your microwave. And good for you and your uh, freeze-dried, uh, you know, ice cream. Tastes like shit. But what have they done? You know? Oh, they helped uh, solve what? What did they help cure? What did they help solve? What did they... What are, we, what are we learning? Go listen to any astronaut interview, and you'll hear what sounds like a person with a high school education telling children that they do science on the big science machine in the sky that does uh, orbits, which are uh, science-based, and that they need to stay in the STEM sciences uh, to become great astronauts like them, uh, even though when they're asked, what experiments are you doing on the ISS? They've never given an answer at all. And they've never even given any kind of, a, of a, an experiment that they're doing. It's like, well, we're doing science, and we're just banging out that science, rocking it out every day, doing science, sending data down to scientists who are reviewing the data and making our lives better every day. Thank you, NASA. Uh, 50 years, 60 years. Um, and right now, $53 million a day. $53 million a day. Okay? Just think about that for a second. Think if you won a million dollars right now, think of what you could start thinking of what you could do with that money. I want a million bucks. Even if you had to pay taxes on it, you said, okay, I'm going to take home $600,000. Think of all the things that you could purchase that you could do for the world with that kind of money. NASA gets $52 million a day. And what do you get? This. Go, NASA. Yeah, keep orbiting the Earth 19 years and you haven't done a shitting thing. By the way, for that $52 million a day, they've never provided a 24-hour view of the Earth. Let me remind you, NASA gets your tax money, $52 million a day, to provide something for humanity, right? That's their mission statement. We provide for humanity. Uh, I'll actually find their mission statement over here somewhere, uh, and I'll bring these up uh, later. But their mission is we reach new heights and reveal the unknown for the benefit of humankind. Yeah, you reach new heights, which are about uh, probably about 110 miles, probably the farthest you've ever been. Um, but anyway, uh, and reveal the unknown for the benefit of humankind and also hide as much as we possibly can. That's basically what they do. But <clears throat> this is their, their motto, right? And they've never provided. Now, remember, they have a craft. It orbits the Earth, goes around it in their model, in, in globe Earth belief, in the fantasy land that is the globe model. They've got people in orbit with this tin can. It's been in orbit for 19 years. And during those 19 years, they have never provided 24-hour footage of the Earth. Can you imagine? What a slap in the face to the American public than to say, here, give me that $52 million a day. No, you don't get 24-hour footage. We're switching cameras. Switching cameras. You might think that that's a uh, joke. It is not. Okay, they say that, sorry, we're currently switching cameras. Oh, switching cameras, are you? Wow, that's really impressive. I thought that we could do that with live footage and not lose any footage, but not according to NASA. Nope, uh, when they switch cameras, it takes about 40 minutes uh, to come back. You also will never see lights live from the Earth. Uh, you will not see uh, street lights. You will not see city lights. You will not see any lights. You will not see lightning. Uh, those things will come in post-production when people like uh, Joy NG or these other science storytellers from PBS, when they get together and they make movies for you, then yes, you can see pretty lights and you can see lightning and you can pretend you live on a space ball, uh, which is a gigantic rock of lava uh, with a molten iron core, uh, with an R value that's never been proven, and all of that with a spinning that's never been proven, and we just believed it. Hey, I'm just like you guys. I'm no different. I'm no better. I believed it like you. I sat in a desk and thought, why would they ever lie to me? We must be spinning on a space rock, and we must be flying through space at 66,000 miles per hour, and the sun must be a million times bigger than the Earth. Give me a break. Wake up. Look at your reality and stop letting men dictate it for you. Okay? I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm telling you, go outside, and you figure it out yourself. 
figure out where you live. And if you choose that the men that have told you all these stories of space stories and planets and orbits, and if you want to believe all that, then go ahead. That's your uh, prerogative. For me, hell no. You, I think we get one life here. I don't want to believe lies that somebody told me. You know, I don't want to. I think that um, <clears throat> Richard Feynman said it when he said that he would rather have uh, uh, he he would rather not know the answer than to have answers that end up being wrong. And so would I. So yeah, you can go around believing that you have all the answers about how the universe works, and you can be George Hunachuk, and you can be all these guys that think you know everything. I know everything. I know exactly the way the earth works. I know exactly the way it all operates. And if you're happy with that, good for you. You know, I don't want to believe those things and then find out when it's all over uh, that I was wrong. I would rather uh, be responsible for my own beliefs. In the you know, on my final day, if I believed a bunch of lies, I want it to be because I investigated them and came to that conclusion on my own. And not one of us can say that about the earth. Not one of us. We all believe because we were told at a young age. That's why there was a 0% chance that you came out of sixth grade, fourth grade, not believing in the globe earth, zero percent. So when that's the case, then I say it's worth every penny to go back and investigate this thing from the very beginning. And when you do, it falls apart. Everything, Aristophanes, uh, Aristarchus, it all falls and crumbles when you realize that all of our history is a lie, that we probably haven't even been here as long as people think, that there's probably some sort of reset or cataclysm or something that they know about, and that's why it's easy for them. And when it happens again, they'll just come out with the same information 100 years from now, 50 years from now, and they'll be able to teach it to their masses then, and everybody will believe it then, and they can just reissue the Bible, and everybody will believe that then because there's no dates in there, and it's just all nonsense. It was all written in 1600. Go back and do your own research. Find out when books were written. Find out why it is that all we have is copies of copies of copies of copies. Find out why that is. Find out if they could have been changed and how you would know. And then you'll uh, come to the realization. <clears throat> Real quick, we'll take a timeout break uh, just to show you. I just brought up some various uh, websites that uh, have the same problem that I had. Um, let me give you a better view. I know you can see only a framed portion of this, so let's transition this. There you go. Uh, getting NASA to comply with um, simple FOIA requests is a nightmare. Uh, NASA often refuses to complete Freedom of Information Act requests using the excuse that it's unclear. This is just one particular arg article. You can bring this up. But uh, NASA, when it comes to FOIA requests, is a total joke. Absolute should not have taken me eight months and $1,400 to produce something that should be digitally stored. We don't have that many spacewalks. This isn't like I'm asking for, even if I were to ask for a baseball game. I mean, think about that. If I were to go and ask a baseball team, hey, can I see the game that you played against this team? On this date, and it was only from 2006, the team would be like, well, we only have 162 games a year. Sure, here's the file. It's easy for us to find. 162 games a year against this team on this date. Boom, go right to the archives. They'll give you the file. It's that simple. NASA, oh, boy. Well, we've only had 200 spacewalks in our entirety of 60 years. 2006, that's going to be tough, and it's going to cost you $1,400, and you're going to have to wait eight months for us to send back crap, to send back various... ISS footages you could have taken in a in a soundstage, in a pool, in models. Have you ever seen how they do the models on Space uh, uh, Space Odyssey or 2000? What, what they've got is a little black box with black felt and you know lined, and then they put little models in there, hung on little fishing strings, and they take pictures of it, and it looks real. And that's how Star Wars was done, and that's how Spaceballs was done. And, I mean, there's so many stories behind that. I don't know if people know about Spaceballs. You've seen that movie, right? Hopefully you have. Great uh, great film. But certain things had to happen with that movie. For instance, um, uh, George Lucas made sure that if they were going to come out with the movie that they weren't allowed to have any merchandise. So you might even remember the merchandise scenes in the video were actually a joke because they weren't allowed to have merchandise. Why not? Because their merchandise would look exactly the same as Star Wars because they all use the same process. So when you go look at Star Wars and you go look at how these things look on the blackness of space, then go back and look at NASA's footage, and it's identical. It's the same thing. It's the same crap-ass models in a black box that have been sold to humanity as true, and because we learned it when we were in kindergarten and first grade and because everybody believed it, we hold on to it super tight. Not me, not anymore. 
Let's go to um, this one here, uh, which is an interesting article talking about NASA should be friendly friendly to the press. Lately, it's not. Uh, it's just talking about how no matter what these people are trying, be it uh, um, different researchers or interviewers or whatever, um, researchers basically, that every time they try to contact NASA, NASA never gets back to them. They're not available for interviews. They can never get information when they need it. Uh, NASA will announce some new finding. Then a bunch of media people will try and contact them for quotes. They can't get a hold of them. There's nobody from NASA. Nobody returns their uh, information. Uh, even like this guy who says, uh, while well, each reporter's mileage may vary, I'm not the only one plagued by the slow speed of NASA. I always anticipate having to wait a few days or wait for several days to hear back, says a national space reporter who, like many of the reporters I spoke to, wished to remain anonymous. So even these reporters that report on space say, don't mention my name. I'm reporting anonymously that NASA doesn't respond to me. Well, because they don't want to get... Um, you know, thrown out of the community. They don't want to be unwelcomed into the uh, uh, allowed press booth where only people that NASA gives permission to can do stories on them. It's ridiculous. Um, but it says, because reporters know that NASA train arrives late, if they don't need a NASA's comment, they sometimes seek out specifically non-NASA sources. Um, the lag also stops them from pitching NASA stories in the first place, seeking greener pastures that are easier to cultivate. Um, NASA scientists haven't always been unreachable. Have, haven't always been so unreachable and that some even used to schedule their own calls with reporters without the need of including communication staff. But now, if you're going to talk to a NASA scientist, you have to have a NASA communication staff involved. Well, this is what happens when you start telling the world lies. You need a lot of control over that. When you're telling the truth, guess what? You don't need that. Sorry. When you're telling the truth, you don't need a media representative. You don't need a communication staff member because you're just telling the truth. But when you've got a very dictated, very laid out system of uh, stories that you have to tell in a certain way and you can't release that, don't say that, well, this is what you get. Um, so anyway, check out this product, uh, this article I read. It. It's uh, kind of long, but uh, the other thing that's interesting is some of these comments, um, but it's ridiculous that NASA is the way it is. If anybody has watched my two previous videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I did nothing wrong in the whole process. And yet, uh, it's been one of the worst experiences ever, and it really does discourage you from ever doing it again. Like, for instance, why would I request anything from NASA again? They stole my money. They took eight months to deliver. They delivered crap. So what do you do if you're in my predicament? Even if that didn't prove shit, but who do I go to? What do I go to? The media? And I say, hey, NASA didn't actually do this spacewalk that cost the, you know, the country $37 million or whatever it was. They actually faked it and just did a little porch golf ball hit and took the money from some space agency, sorry, from some golf agency out of Canada and never did an actual spacewalk. But then NASA would just say, well, here's the footage right here. And the media would go look at that and say, it's right there. It's right there. Go, here it is. Here's the spacewalk. Here's the footage, Jaron. What are you asking for? Well, where's the rest of it? Where is the five and a half hours that these astronauts are supposed to be out there doing something? So where do I go? What do I do? Don't you understand what they're doing? Don't you understand what they did? By doing it this way, it makes it impossible for me to even want to continue to look into NASA stuff. And I say we stop. I say, fuck them. That's what I say. They're garbage. They provide garbage. They're not worth the time. That's the honest truth. They're not worth the time. My wife and I used to sit and watch spacewalks. And we used to really critique the live ones because I said, hey, if we're ever going to find anything, it's going to be on the live videos. And then I watched as uh, Elon Musk completely changed live video in front of my eyes on YouTube, still listed today as streamed live on such and such date, yet I've got the proof that they went in after and changed it. So what did we do at that point? Well, I don't watch live shit anymore. I could care less. They can change live footage. Well, well why would I watch it? What difference does it make? You're just going to change it. When I try and bring it up to people, it's not going to do anything. It doesn't matter. So to me, NASA has proven themselves to be worth spit. What I mean by that is nothing. They're worth garbage. Uh, let's see one second. I want to make sure I've got this all good. Uh, thank you again. I see I had another super chat. I appreciate that. So anyway, if anybody wants to go through any of this footage uh, in detail, um, please do. Uh, you know, I didn't find much. Uh, let's see if I have anything else on my list here. Uh, but it's certainly not proof to me. But it gets to the point where it's like, well, you know, I did send the email off and say, hey, this isn't what I asked for. What happened to the helmet cam footage? I mean, my main question was, is there more spacewalk footage, audio or head cam footage related, that was redacted from my FOIA request? Because this is supposed to be public information. This is public 
uh, you know, public funds were used to, I guess, put this. That's a craft flying in space, by the way. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, if you believe that this is the Earth and we're just we're out floating in the blackness and emptiness of space, the gigantic ball Earth. Think of how big the ball Earth would be. Think of how much it would weigh. Think of how much mass it would have. And we're just floating in space. You could believe that if you want, but you've never seen it. You've never seen it with your own eyes. So you're taking the words of men. And again, if they lie to you about everything on Earth, and I don't know very many people that would say, nope, we're never lied to. No, we're lied to, and I don't know anybody that wouldn't say that. So if you uh, differ in that, then leave a comment. I think everybody would agree that we've been lied to in almost every aspect of our lives. Everything that happens to you is some sort of lie, really. But here's the difference. This is a place you can't go. This is a distance you can't measure. This is the size of a planet you'll never see. This is an entire world, an entire fantasy that is a religious belief that you are willing to go to bat for, that you are willing to repeat out of books for, that you are willing to swear up and down and call people names in every facet that's possible for. That's a religion. That's exactly what religions do, and that's what space has become. It's become a religion. It's a fantastical fantasy and nothing more. And I refuse to say anything else until I'm shown evidence for it. Okay? So I don't care. I, I have no problem admitting I don't know where I live. I'm not sure what I live on. I'm not sure how it all works. I'm not sure what the sun is or how far it is or what distance it is. So don't ask me. But there's people out there telling us they do know. And when people have made a claim like they know the distance to the sun, then it's perfectly okay for you to say, oh, show me the evidence of the distance to the sun. Okay? When they have to tell you a story about people assuming that the light in the sky that is Venus was the same size as Earth, and then they calculated, well, if it's the same size of Earth, and we presume um, you know, with a presupposition that the Earth is a ball and it's this big that Aristophanes came up with 2,000 years ago, and then we apply that to the light in the sky that's nothing more than a light, oh, now we can say that that's about the same size as Earth, and if it's crossing the sun, then the sun must be this big, and the sun must be this far, and then they create this entire fantasy for you. Watch my video on scaling and variance, and you'll realize, cut all those distances in half, and we're in the same boat. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. Cut the distances in half, cut the sizes in half, and everything appears to be the same. The sun is, appears to be the same size in the sky because of scaling and variance. doesn't matter if it's 330 um, million miles away and 3 million miles wide, or if it's 93 million miles away and 867,000 miles wide. doesn't matter. Same thing. Mathematics do not prove reality when somebody can't go out and physically confirm it. So who is confirming these distances? Who is confirming planets? Who is confirming their orbits? Who is? No, nobody. Nobody. It's all a space-based religion. Uh, let's see here. Thank you for the uh, super chat. I appreciate that. Earth is seriously flat. It is seriously flat. It is observably flat. And if you believe differently, then I hope that you have reasons for believing that other than what my teacher said. Well, scientists say, yeah, good for you. Because if they don't say that, then they won't be a scientist. If you, if you come out and say, well, I don't think the Earth's uh, a ball, you won't be a scientist. They will remove you from that profession damn quickly. So again, um, that's pretty much it. And then camera four, uh, let's see here, what was on camera four? I mean, there's just, what, what are we going to review? We're going to sit around and watch this? I mean, this is what they sent me. So if you don't think that this could have been taken last week or whenever, and I'm not saying that this is in space. I hope you understand it's one of the hardest things about doing this is a lot of times you have to start talking as if you believe in this nonsense, which I don't. Um, but even if I did, you know, what is this? Oh, this little thing's turning now. Great. That's proof of your spacewalk that lasted five and a half hours that supposedly you did a bunch of work, but all I can find is uh, you guys acting like jackasses and I guess, considering hitting the, this is hitting a golf ball. I mean, it just looks like junk. And as I've said before, you put people in green screens or green suits. I don't know if you've ever seen like Green Man. You could put on a spandex green suit and you could be holding these guys up from behind them. And then you just do a chroma key and eliminate them. It's the easiest trick that there is in photography. But here's the problem. If you're the only ones in space, then nobody can check up on you. Nobody can verify that this is actually happening in space. 
It's just what they tell you. So you can believe NASA. Well, I don't. That's basically the moral of my story is I don't believe liars. It's not like NASA said they went to the moon and then in 1982 came out and said, ah, we did it for the cold race. I mean, the Cold War, we did it for the space race. We did it because we wanted to get by, you know, whatever. And they admitted that they lied and kind of, no, these people lie to your face today. Okay. You still have people that will tell you, Buzz Aldrin will tell you he went to the moon. He'll tell you that today. Okay. So when people are lying to me for 60 years, if you think I'm going to believe this shit, you got another thing coming. Uh, This is proof of nothing to me at all. It's more garbage. It's more proof that NASA is an inept, completely disgraceful organization a laughing stock in my book. They provide nothing real. They have clouded the minds and, uh, you know, bent over the American public and the world and continue to do so. And they continue to get funding. So why would they stop? And why would they stop telling you about satellites that they put up in space when really it just costs them a few uh, tens of grands or, you know, $10,000, $50,000 to put up balloons that do the same work that are cheaper, easier to manage, more effective, closer? Better accuracy, better accuracy, that sit up there in an area where there is no weather, where there is no wind, okay? And they're controlled by computer. You don't even need a human being to keep a balloon in the same location. The balloon has a little canister in it that explodes when it gets too low, rises it back up, it vents when it gets too uh, high, comes back down, remains in the exact same spot, and all of it is computer controlled, not even a person needed in the world. So... Anyway, that's basically it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, just going through this uh, file. I did tell everybody that the files would be available to the uh, public domain, and they are. Um, again, you can go to tinyurl.com slash NASA FOIA 14 or change the 14 to a 22 if you want to watch the other one. Uh, I did want to say a big thank you. Uh, they are the best, and if you want to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash me to continue doing this research and exposing liars around and continue to indoctrinate and enslave the entire world. More than 50 or 100, uh, you know, YouTubers out there making videos. And and I try not to. Uh, I don't care who says what about me. I don't care. Nonsense channel says that uh, I'm involved in, or it's just all bullshit. So, if you know, that are mudslinging, that are um, doing nothing but just causing what you're doing. That's, in my opinion, you wasting time. Um, and could be- so, I don't watch those channels, so I don't even hear it. Um, other than that, oh yeah, one other thing, uh, if you want to support this channel in an easy way, in a free way, uh, you can go on Amazon, go to j.k slash jaredamz. Before you shop on Amazon, you pay the same price, I get a small percentage, uh, that also helps me. So I appreciate you guys watching so much. If you need me or have a question for me, best place to go is ask.fm slash jaredamz. Ask there, it may take you a few days, but I will get back to you. Um, and I believe that is it. So I appreciate you guys watching so much. Uh, and remember to do your own research. And if you do, you'll never again believe what you've been taught. Uh, till next time, guys, this has been Jaronism. Peace.